Hey guys, what's good? Derek here from Bomb Socks with more Bomb Bites, where we feast upon the words of Christ one bite at a time. So yesterday I asked you to think about how you would start your story with Jesus Christ, someone who has never heard of Jesus Christ, because that's kind of what we've got here in the initial chapters as we're hitting, you know, Matthew chapter 1 and 2, Luke chapter 1 and 2, which we've studied the last couple weeks. Uh, if you go to the Bible dictionary and you start looking up Gospels, it says the records of Matthew, Mark, and we'll talk about Mark next week. I love Mark. I'm excited for Mark and Luke present a somewhat similar collection of materials and have considerable phraseology in common, as well as similar main points, and thus are sometimes labeled as the synoptic gospels, meaning see alike. Even so, each is unique and has much detail that is not shared by the others. And so you got like Matthew who starts off his record with the lineage, the physical lineage of Jesus Christ through Mary and Joseph. And then you got Luke who starts it off with the two families. You've got Zacharias and Elizabeth, and you've got Mary and Joseph is where he starts off. Now John, what it continues here, it says, John's record is quite different from the other three in vocabulary, phraseology, and presentation of events. John's account does not contain much of the fundamental information that the other records contain. You don't see any of the birth of Jesus Christ and so forth. And it is evident that he was writing to members of the church who already had basic information about the Lord. That's why what I mentioned, you know, a couple weeks ago about how it's so important to be able to recognize these gospel writers as individuals and who their audience is and who they speak to. That's a key element to understanding why the gospels are so important. John's primary purpose was to emphasize the divine nature of Jesus as the only begotten Son of God in the flesh. Now we see that as we go right into the first five verses of John chapter one. I love this. In the beginning, which, which is the same way the Bible starts off, right? With the book of Genesis. In the beginning was the word. And that's capitalized. We'll talk about that in a second. And the word was with God and the word was God. There's a lot going on in that verse. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. I love that statement. In him was life and the life was the light of men and that light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. Like I said, there's a lot going on there. So I want to back up a little bit and I want to focus on the word word. Okay. President Nelson talked about this back about 20 years ago. Uh, he said, under the direction of the father, Jesus bore the responsibility of creator. His title was the word spelled with capital W. In the Greek language of the New Testament, which the New Testament was originally in that Greek, that Septuagint that we talked about, the word was logos or expression. It was another name for the master. That terminology may seem strange, but it is appropriate. We use words to convey our expression to others. So Jesus was the word or expression of his father to the world, which I think is awesome. So I decided to look into that a little bit. I love what President Nelson said. I went to that word logos and I wanted to explore that a little bit in Greek. So the word logos looks like this right here. It is Greek, like it says, and it means word, reason, or plan, which I think is so cool. That opens up some different dimensions to me. In Greek philosophy and theology, the divine reason implicit in the cosmos ordering and giving it form and meaning. So one possible translation of this John chapter one could be, in the beginning was the plan and it was God's plan and the plan was Jesus Christ. That to me all of a sudden opens up all kinds of things to help us understand this chapter and to understand John's testimony about Jesus Christ. So I went and played with that word a little bit more. Uh, sometimes when you take words, and I'm, I'm a word nerd when it comes to the scriptures, I'll take words that I think I understand and I'll do all kinds of crazy stuff with them. And one of the things I will often do is I will take them, I will put them in a different language, and then I'll translate it back into English, which is, again, my native language. And you kind of see it doesn't always turn out the same way. So I decided to take it over into Spanish. Now, I know a little bit of Spanish, not a lot. Like I said, I served my mission in South Dakota. So I know a little bit of Spanish. Take that for what it's worth. So I went, and it's kind of cool. In your Gospel Library app, you can just go to Settings, and you can go to your language, and you can switch it to several different different languages. Now, if you look at John chapter 1 in Spanish, it says, En el principio era el verbo, y el verbo estaba con Dios, y el verbo era Dios. So you can see some similarities there. And you don't have to know a lot of Spanish to understand that. But I love how the word word is translated to as el verbo, which I looked it up. Verbo 
it means word, but it also means verb, which makes sense, right? El verbo means verb. Now, when you think about verbs, verbs make things happen. That's part of this. It's the action that happens in the sentence. So Jesus Christ is the action that propels us forward. It moves us from old ways into new ways. So as John starts off his testimony, he wants you to know right out the gate, Jesus Christ is the plan of action if you want to make changes in your life. Now, when we go to tomorrow's episode, you're going to see examples of that as we start exploring that a little bit into the book of John. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And thanks, as always, for sharing. We appreciate that. Please go check out our amazingly comfortable gospel theme socks at bombsocks.com. And you guys have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. Godspeed. Bye-bye.